In today's video, we travel all the way back to 1988 to check out Blood Bowl 2nd Edition from Games Workshop, as well as the Star Players Hardback Supplement Book, a bunch of special rules from White Dwarf Magazine, and a whole host of vintage Blood Bowl miniatures for tabletop fantasy football. Well, hi folks, welcome to the channel. This is Lee from SkirmishWarGames.com, and are you ready for some fantasy football action from way back in 1988? Yeah, that's right. Today we're talking about Blood Bowl 2nd Edition from Games Workshop. Now when I bought this box set at a comic book store around 31 years ago, I guess I assumed this was the one and only version of Blood Bowl. But actually, two years earlier than this, in 1986, there was Blood Bowl 1st Edition, which had sort of a cardstock playing field and two-dimensional cardstock players, and it must have done pretty well because then, um, of course, in 88 they came out with this version. And just as a historical footnote, in the fall of 1982, about four years before the first edition of Blood Bowl, TSR, the publisher of Dungeons & Dragons, included a complete fantasy football game called Monsters of the Midway in their September 1982 issue of Dragon Magazine. So this was more of a hex-based game, but you could play kobolds, tree ants, uh, giants, gnolls, gnomes, leprechauns, so a lot of the different monsters from the Monster Manual could be played in this fantasy football game. And they even included sort of a cardstock uh, scoreboard that you could cut out and assemble. So obviously this is quite a bit different game than Blood Bowl. But it's interesting that back in the 80s, at least a couple of different companies were kicking around the idea of fantasy football. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. We're going to unbox and look at the components of Blood Bowl 2nd Edition from 1988. We're also going to take a look at the Star Player Supplementary Hardback Book with some additional rules for Blood Bowl. And we'll also take a look at some uh, vintage Blood Bowl 2nd Edition Metal Armies, as well as take a look at some White Dwarf magazines from around that time that had some special rules. So my knowledge of Blood Bowl as a current game is pretty limited. I know that there's been a few editions since then. What are they at, version 5 right now? I'm not even sure. But honestly, I haven't been following it uh, since the 1980s or early 90s, so I'm a little bit behind the times. When I left home, I threw out a lot of my uh, old GW and TSR stuff, probably thousands of dollars worth now. Um, some of it went right in the dumpster. But I held on to Blood Bowl for some reason, so I still have my uh, box set, my books, my magazines, and my metal armies, and uh, I think we're going to start playing some games just for fun. So we're actually painting up some teams that have been languishing in the box for three decades. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the components of the box set. But before we do, let's take a look at some of this crazy art. This is just the uh, side panels of the box that you can't see when the lid is on it. So I'm digging the uh, retro 80s paint jobs. And then, and this is kind of fun, some of you graybeards out there might recognize some of these vintage GW games. Fury of Dracula, wasn't that on tabletop at one point? At one time I had a copy of the Chainsaw Warrior card game. Some of these other ones I don't really um, recognize. Alright, well, let's unbox this puppy. Sorry guys, we're just going to speed things along here. So, there's the back of the box. Pretty awesome. I remember I got this game because we had just watched a rollerball on VHS. That's that old James Caan movie that's kind of like roller derby plus mini bikes plus gladiatorial combat. So then when they announced this, I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. So, so I bought in pretty heavy. I bought the box set. I bought the supplements. I bought a bunch of armies. And then um, they all just kind of languished in a trunk. But it's been following me around everywhere I've moved for the last three decades. So. So yeah, it's cool. You put a few decades of distance on something and it really uh, has kind of a retro appeal to it. So I'm glad I didn't purge this and held on to it and now we can take a look at it. Inspected by number 78, apparently. Good job, number 78, wherever you are. So as I said, I haven't been really keeping up with Blood Bowl over the years. I know there was a second edition and a third edition and then some sort of fourth edition living rule book and then maybe a fifth edition came out um in 2016 but uh, that's all i really know so i don't know what they're using for a uh, playing field now probably some sort of neoprene mat i would suppose but toward the end of the reagan era before the berlin wall fell we had astro granite and apparently from what the fluff says this was developed by dark elves because they couldn't uh, cultivate turf down in their uh, dungeons so this is astro granite otherwise known as styrofoam and it's pretty sturdy. Like I said, I've been hauling around in this box all these years, and it's held up. Hasn't broken, hasn't crumbled. Then you also get uh, the rules, the rule book. 
There's the rule book, which has both um, very basic sort of starter rules for just getting uh, your feet wet. One of the things I really like about this, it's pretty well illustrated, so you can see exactly you know, how the movements are supposed to go. So they did a good job with that. And then you get onto the veteran rules, which include passing and stuff like that. And that's really basically it. They do give you some stats for some other races outside of the men and uh, orcs that are included in this uh, box set. And then they get a lot more in detail with the different races in the uh, Star Players um, supplement, which we'll look at it here in a minute. So that is the rule book. And then the Blood Bowl 2nd Edition Handbook is really more fluff and uh, universe building, but it's pretty funny. Here's some nice photography showing some painted teams. Does look very 1980s, doesn't it? Some history of Blood Bowl. And then some background on the various teams. So yeah, pretty cool. Nice job. Nice job not only making the game, but building a story around it. So that is the uh, Blood Bowl handbook. The box set also comes with a bunch of other stuff. You get a couple of reference cards for the two teams that come with the box set. That is the men and the orcs. So as I said, the box set came with two teams. You got uh, the humans and the orcs. And here's these little reference cards. And basically, if they're basic game, I think everyone was just a lineman. But when you use the veteran rules that are included with the box set rule book, you use a little color snap-on wheel here that uh, pops onto the base to show you whether it's a blocker, a blitzer, a lineman, a thrower, or a catcher. So a lineman has no color wheel around his base, and everyone else has uh, a color designator to show what their function is. But other than that, they're all the same model. Here's a closer look. Yeah, they're not bad. You know, just basic football players. But better probably than the cardstock stand-ups that uh, they used in the first edition. Each team also got their own dugout. And basically you put that down around here. And then over here. And then you were able to use this to keep score. As well as show who was left in reserve, who was stunned, KO'd, or injured. So I'm not sure how they do it now, but in this version of the game, you start out with 16 players. Uh, some of them are on the pitch playing the game, and some were held in reserve. Of course, if you had a big guy on your team, that counted as two players. And if you have snotlings on your team, that counts as half a player. But regardless, you had some of your team uh, playing the game, and then if they got uh, injured or KO'd, then uh, you could bring in a reserve player. The game also came with these double-sided end zone graphics, so if you wanted to use one of the famous teams, you could use this end zone marker to decorate your end zone. Let's see, Dark Side Cowboys, that's Stark Elves. The Orkland Raiders, for example. You can go right there, and the Lowdown Rats. Dwarf Giants, Champions of Death, and we will say the Rickland Reavers. The Bright Crusaders, so here we go. And finally, you got a clear plastic range ruler for passing the football. And then a couple of scatter templates um, using, of, of all things, a D8, which you don't see very often in GW stuff, I think, right? So that is essentially the contents of the Blood Bowl 2nd Edition box set featuring men versus orcs, inspected by number 78. But very shortly after this came out, GW produced the Blood Bowl Star Players book and added a whole new dimension to the game. So right off the bat, the book does include some new rules, not a whole lot of them. And then it includes the concept of star players. So you have the skill table and the skill description. So you go from having sort of generic players to having some really talented players that can do funky things on the football field. The star players book also includes a multitude of different races. Uh, actually, if you got the uh, dwarf versus elves dungeon bowl set, which came out a little after blood bowl, uh, that would have dwarves and elves in it. But a lot of these other ones, dark elves, Goblins, yeah, if you want a challenge. Halflings, if you want a real challenge. Skeletons. They didn't really have skeleton miniatures at this time, so people were just using the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle Skeletons and sticking Space Marine shoulder pads on them. Skaven, I have an unpainted Skaven Blood Bowl team. Slon, I've never seen a Slon team. I think uh, there's a lot of third-party manufacturers now, today, making fantasy football teams. So you probably can get just about anything you want. But back then, I don't think I ever saw that one. Norse. Werewolves. I have one werewolf. Chaos humans. I do have a bunch of chaos humans. A lot of them came from the star player uh, blister packs. 
and uh, I have a half painted uh, Chaos Human team that I should finish up someday. And this is the really fun part, large monsters and throwing teammates. So ogres, trolls, minotaurs, snotlings, they can be tossed, tree men. And as I remember, a big guy costs you two player spots on your team, but pretty worth having. And speaking of big guys, here are some of the uh, Blood Bowl big guy miniatures I've had lying around. So this guy here, I think, was a later version of the Ogre. And uh, this might have been the first version. I'm not entirely sure. And then here's the Minotaur. He is uh, unwieldy and likes to tip forward. So he's really a little too big for his base. And frankly, a little bit out of scale with some of the other players. But um, pretty cool, nonetheless. Here's a tree man. Most of the big guy Blood Bowl players are aligned with chaos, so uh, it's nice to have a big guy that can play with your elf and or halfling teams. And then these trolls, I have a couple of these guys, and uh, last time I checked, they're worth about 50 bucks a piece on eBay, so a lot of this vintage Blood Bowl stuff is hard to come by. So you also get a bunch of these uh, cardstock star player cards for adding star players to your team. The right star player, if you can keep them alive and playing, can make a huge difference in the outcome of the game, so. I have quite a few of these too. So that is the Star Players book. So in addition to the new rules in uh, the Star Players hardback book, there was also uh, another book published, I think called the Blood Bowl Companion, which might add some different stuff in it. I don't have a copy of that, so I'm not sure. But there were a variety of Blood Bowl rules published in various issues of White Dwarf Magazine. Here's just a few that I have. So going back to the January 1989 edition of White Dwarf Magazine, here are rules for Goblin Fanatics on Pogo Sticks of Doom. And I actually have a couple of those miniatures here. So I guess that allows them to like uh, jump up and catch the football, bound over prone opponents, and then make some kind of crazy dash for the end zone. And hilarity no doubt ensues. Here's issue 113, uh, May 1989. And this gives you rules for using wandering monsters in Dungeon Bowl, which of course was the Elf and Dwarf, uh, not supplement, but the Elf and Dwarf box set that came after Blood Bowl was published. But I don't see any reason why you couldn't incorporate some of these into your uh, regular Blood Bowl game. If you had a hankering to have blood letters on the field, or an amble, or a zote. I remember playing Warhammer 40k with zotes. That's how far back I go. So moving on to the June 1989 issue of White Dwarf, not only do you get uh, rules for having chainsaw-wielding loonies on your Blood Bowl team, but also some new star player cards. So that's pretty cool. And some of these I have. Some of these look very familiar. That guy, that guy, that guy. So a lot of these Chaos guys, that guy, which I'll show you here in a minute with my Chaos team. My incomplete Chaos team. And here's some of the Chainsaw Looney miniatures that I have. I don't remember exactly, but I think these all came in the same set. And I should have a human uh, chainsaw player around here somewhere, but um, can't quite find him. And there wasn't one for Chaos, as far as I could tell. So I took a Warhammer 40,000 uh, Imperial Beastman Sergeant and turned him into a Blood Bowl player. So I'm not sure the logic of that, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. The October 1989 issue of White Dwarf gives us rules for Blood Bowl magic. Magic allows you to assist your team with spells like Cloud Jump, Grab It, Muscle Boost, Speed Burst, and Deathbringer. And finally, White Dwarf issue 122, that's February 1990. Blood Bowl Magic Items. Buff your team with the Gauntlets of Catching, the Helm of Distraction, a Lucky Rabbit's Foot, or Boots of Speed. Uh, we can uh, take a quick look at some of the teams. This is a Chaos team that I've been cobbling together from a variety of sources. Um, some of these are Chaos Star players. Some of them, I think, came from the Chaos Team uh, blister packs. I think that guy there is just a regular lineman. I'm going to assume that that is a uh, Chaos Blocker of some type. There is one of the Mutant Star players. Actually, that guy's a Mutant Star player, as is this guy. Don't ask me why I picked an orange and black color scheme. Maybe the Bengals were playing the Super Bowl that year. I'm not sure. And then this guy here is actually a human star player. He's a good guy, um, but he got drafted onto this chaos team. Maybe he'll get repainted for the humans. I don't know. And then, you know, the color-coordinated big guy. 
So this isn't quite enough to field a team, but I have some extras lying around, some extra Chaos players, so maybe I can flesh this out, and we can use it for a sample game at some point. Oh yeah, and then they got their Chainsaw Looney. Okay, so this real quickly, here is the uh, Dwarf team. 16 players on the teams back in 1988. I'm not sure what they're doing now. There's their Chainsaw Looney. At some point, I thought I had, they have a Dwarf Star player with a bazooka, a Dwarf Thrower with a bazooka, and I cannot find him anywhere. But I do have the first version of the Dwarf Death Roller. I think there's a much more sophisticated model available now uh, for modern Blood Bowl teams, but this is what you got back in the Reagan era. If you're looking for a challenge, here are some of the Snotlings. These guys can be thrown by some of the bigger players, and uh, they, you get two Snotlings for every one regular player. I don't know if that helps much. This guy here appears to be, can't say they don't have a sense of humor, appears to be relieving himself in somebody's helmet. So, there you go. Here's some Skaven players, in case you want to play a horde of Ratmen. This guy here is the four-armed mutant Skaven Catcher, I think. And back when this game came out, I don't think there was a, a big guy version of a Rat Ogre for Blood Bowl. So a lot of people were just using the Warhammer Fantasy Battle Rat Ogre with the chains around his fists. And he worked just fine, so they just gave him the same stats as the Ogre. That's not sanctioned in the rule book, but that's the way we played it. And it let the Skaven sort of have a thematic big guy of their own, so that was kind of neat. And finally, for those who wanted to field an army of the dead, uh, there wasn't a skeleton Blood Bowl team available at the time. So some people were just taking the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle plastic skeleton box, sticking some extra Space Marine shoulder pads on the skeletons. That might be an old Citadel mummy or whatever. And... Uh, these guys need to be painted too, but you can designate the throwers by having their arms raised. You designate the catchers by uh, having them raise both arms. And there you go. There's your uh, easy to construct skeleton team. Okay, folks. Well, we have some other teams available, but uh, they're in production right now. So hopefully you'll see them in a sample game of Blood Bowl here pretty soon. In the meantime, we hope you enjoyed uh, looking at this throwback to 1988 Blood Bowl 2nd Edition plus the uh, Star Player Supplement, and some special rules found in the uh, 1980s era White Dwarf magazine. So this is the Blood Bowl I played. Uh, I guess I'm stuck in the 80s because I never moved past it, but uh, we're going to dust some of these guys off, paint some of them after uh, three decades or so languishing in a trunk, and then play some sample games of uh, Blood Bowl 2nd Edition here in the near future, and I hope you'll come back for that. Well, folks, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like what we do here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Please give this video a big thumbs up and visit us online at our website, skirmishwargames.com.